Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at Churn 10's Forza Motorsport 7 and Polyphony Digital's Gran Turismo Sport. Now before we start this comparison, here's a few things to keep in mind. I like both games and both platforms that they're being played on, so this demonstration is in no way trying to suggest that one game is better than the other. We're going to be looking strictly at some graphic comparisons. We'll compare some various car models, environmental details, weather effects or lack thereof, and a few other minor things. Also, thanks to Forza 7's annoying randomized time of day that can never be set manually, and Gran Turismo's impossibly obnoxious requirement to unlock individual cars along with individual tracks by progressing through the game, this comparison will be limited and will not be perfect. But I tried my best to get the same time of day and the exact same car models and tracks to help. So let's start by looking at the yellow Corvette C7 racing on Brand's hatch on the Indy circuit. So the first thing you're probably noticing is how much brighter the color is in Gran Turismo. Be careful though, both races are set in the evening, but Forza 7 is slightly further along, so the lighting has changed drastically. Next, you may have noticed some differences in the car itself. Forza 7 appears to have a more authentic model to the real-life counterpart. I don't know what's going on in the model in Gran Turismo Sport, but I've looked in several places and I can't find an image of an actual C7R that has that spoiler or diffuser. Maybe they're custom builds, I'm not really sure, but in terms of the actual body, both cars do appear to be identical. Then we have the anti-aliasing, which looks significantly better in Forza 7 than in Gran Turismo Sport. I've looked at multiple angles and different lighting conditions, and GT Sport is just no match for that native 4K output in Forza 7, along with its specialized anti-aliasing methods. Now let's check out some footage of the Porsche 911 GT3 RS, racing on Mount Panorama. Now this track's lighting isn't going to line up as well as the last race because for whatever reason Gran Turismo's sun seems to always be in the same side of the track, regardless of the time of day. I tried morning and evening and no matter what the shadows at this finish line always go in the same direction and that are opposite to the shadows in Forza. So be aware that this lighting difference can significantly affect some of our comparisons. But what I found interesting was how much better the reflective surfaces looked in Gran Turismo. Despite both cars having a metallic body, Forza 7 in these screens almost looks like it's a matte paint when compared to GT Sport. However, once again, we see the advantage of that 4K resolution with flawless edges in Forza and abysmal looking edges in Gran Turismo. Unfortunately, it looks like Polyphony didn't put in any weather effects into Gran Turismo Sport, so it looks like Forza is going to be taking the crown by default in this category. I also want to note how bad these games look when you take away the direct sunlight. Gran Turismo here almost looks like something you'd see on an older console. Forza also suffers the same problem, with very bland, unrealistic lighting taking away from an otherwise good looking game. Polyphony did say that they plan on adding rain effects later, and I'm interested in seeing how those effects will stack up. Now we're going to take it back to Brand's hatch for some sunny close up shots of this 2014 McLaren 650S Coupe. One thing that stood out immediately was the much better reflective surfaces on the cars in Gran Turismo. We can see a very realistic, albeit low res, reflection of the nearby buildings with some decent detail. There's also a few minor cosmetic differences between the cars in both games, like the use of carbon fiber on some of the paneling. GT Sport also does a much better job of recreating these taillights, and it looks much more realistic whereas it looks a bit cartoony in Forza. One thing's for sure though, the native 4K resolution and high res textures in Forza 7 reign supreme over Gran Turismo, and the detail in things like the McLaren logo on the back of the car look much crisper. Again, you may have noticed some differences in coloration, but you should be careful comparing those things as the time of day in these shots is not exact. But I did notice that Forza's colors seem to pop more, despite Gran Turismo's much better HDR support. Now let's look at some various environmental textures and details. First up, we have this road comparison that, oddly enough, looks pretty much identical. The nice thing about Forza is the 2D sprites that Churn 10 added to the grass textures to make it look more three-dimensional. Now Gran Turismo does have this, but it's used much more sparingly and closer to the walls. Then we have this barrier lined with stones that actually has depth in Forza 7, and it absolutely has no depth in Gran Turismo Sport, opting for a simple texture instead. The audience members in both games appear to be handled the same way, with 2D sprites mixed in with a few 3D animated models to help fill out the crowds. 
And finally, we get to the trees, something that a lot of people seem to get amped up about when it comes to graphic comparisons in car games. In Forza, trees are handled as large intersecting sprites to help create the illusion of a large three-dimensional tree. This method has been used for decades and seems a bit outdated considering the attention to detail put into the rest of the game world. The trees in GT Sport also use sprites, but in a much more complex way. Unlike the sprites in Forza, these sprites will rotate with the player's view, so that you can never see the flat dimension. What makes this tree end up looking better is that there's several different small rotating sprites in various positions in the tree, helping it acquire a better depth illusion and overall appear more lifelike. So to put all these console wars to bed, both games look great and both games use shortcuts to help their environments look nicer than they really are. Now for the rest of this video, I'm going to be showing you a few extended side-by-side -side gameplay clips to help give you a better idea of how these two stack up. Thank you all for watching, I hope this video was interesting, and feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this posted every week, and I'll see you all next time.